Hey guys, and welcome to game 7 out of 100 of the Mac vs. Machine series, where I'll be playing 100 games of Scrabble against the top Woogles.io bot, Hastybot. Now we've gotten off to a very strong start, we're up 6-0 uh, right now in the series, so we're going to see if uh, we can extend that into game 7. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Hastybot will be first this game, and he opens with Pavan. We've got a little bit of a clunky rack. We're heavy on the uh, high point constants. We've got a J, a K, an F, and a B. So I'd like to try to get rid of at least a couple of those if we can. See the word jock through this A, which isn't terrible. It scores 24, sets up our S nicely. It's worth noting that Pavan does take an E to make Pavane. Unfortunately, we don't have an E and we can't really use it. Could play Kaf over here. It scores well. It scores 32, and it does take that spot away a little bit, but uh, BJU is kind of clunky together, so I'm not a big fan of that from a, from a Leaf standpoint. I also want to look at Juba here, which, which scores 26. That's a decent score, and I like FAKS probably the best of any of the Leaves we've looked at so far. I think it's better than FABS after Jock. It just gives a little more scoring potential, and flexibility. It also does save Kopf for next turn if he were to leave that spot open, which is fairly unlikely, but not entirely impossible. So I'm definitely leaning towards Jupa at this point. I guess Jock also plays over here for 26, but FBS is a little too constant heavy, so I think I'm going to probably go with Juba. I'm not seeing any other options that are going to be better. Okay, so he has uh, drawn both blanks and bingoed with a midogen. So this is not great news for us. Um, now we won't have either blank unseen in the pool for us to potentially draw and uh, come back with later in the game. We do have some decent scoring options, though. I could uh, I could play fake up here, which uh, parallels a midogen and, and scores 36, which isn't terrible. I do close down some lanes, but I think I'm okay with that. I'm only going to be down uh, about 40 or 45 after this turn, so it's very, very early. So I don't need to start panicking uh, about bingo potential at this point. There's also Fakey through this A. It scores 30. That's that's a bit less, uh, and it does, it does give a lot back. And once again, I'm going to be down a little bit, but... SEI is a strong enough leave, and I have the Pavans and Pavane line. I have a, a Midogen's hook, so I'm, I'm not too worried yet about uh, getting walled in and sort of uh, blocked blocked on a closed board and unable to come back. I think Fake is probably perfectly fine here. I don't see any good way to use Pavane at the moment, uh, since if I start with FE, I don't really think I can use the K, and I definitely want to get rid of the K to try to bingo next turn, if at all possible. So definitely leaning towards Fake at the moment, unless there's, I don't think there's any other overlaps. Yeah, Fakey doesn't quite work here, because it would make EE. So yeah, I'm going to go with Fake. Okay, so he plays Dowing through this O, and guess what, guys? We have a 9. We have uh, Fatuities from this FA, so I'm going to go ahead and play that for 89, and that gets us right back into this game. So we're now down 21. It's basically even. We've got an OK rack here. We got the uh, Q, but it comes with a U, so it's not so bad. We almost have Banquets, but not quite. I'm looking at the play of Bark over here. It scores 29, keeps NS. Of course, I'm not a big fan of opening this spot on the H column. That's the, really the biggest and only problem with Bark. So, I might end up playing it anyway. Let's see. Yeah, there's two H's, an F, a few M's, W. It's, this is really not good to open that, if we can at all help it. It would really have to be a lot better, I think, than our next option to, to justify. Uh, I don't really like SUQ. It doesn't feel necessary to get rid of the S here. No A to play Burka 2 that I see. How about through this I? We have Quinn. It's okay. BERS is, is fine. It's not great, but this is, is a lot 
safer than than bark. Uh, I don't necessarily think bark is worth it. Like I don't I don't want to give him back a easy forty or fifty point play on a board that's not that conducive to scoring opportunities. I'm just looking to see if there's anywhere else to to play off this Q. Like maybe even through this KI, but I don't see it. Yeah, I think it's probably between Quinn and Bark. Quinn, I feel like Quinn's got to be better than Suk. Suk just gives up all the firepower in Iraq for not that many more points. Yeah, Bark, I mean, Bark is very aggressive. And, I mean, the one good thing is even if he does use this spot for, for like, 40 or 50 points, he'll be giving me back a bunch of floaters. And I do keep SN with a lot of ease left. It is a strong leave, so there is something to be said for that as as well. So I'm just trying to think, so if he just played whiny, is there anything I can really infer from that as to what he's likely to have? Probably not. I mean, it's a nice play. It keeps 30, or it scores 33. It could have kept a lot of things. So he... He's not necessarily likely or unlikely to have an H or a W or something like that. I guess I could also consider keeping the Q, now that I think of it, with something like Nib. Which is interesting. I mean, there's a lot of upside to this play if I can somehow draw a bingo, like Pirokes from this from this P. It's just that if I don't bingo next turn, I don't think I'm going to have that many great scoring options with, with the Q. I'd probably rather just play it off with Quinn and keep B-E-R-S, I think, if I'm going to do that. But I'm still kind of intrigued by playing Bark. It, it's probably not a good idea. I mean, he's yeah. There's F two H's two M's. There's just a lot of tiles there that could that could hurt me. But if somehow he doesn't, the upside is so high though. Like if he somehow can't really use that well, or if I do draw a bingo, I think I might actually go for it, guys. It's it's probably a play the computer would like. I think most humans wouldn't, but I feel like there's enough upside that it's it is worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it. Okay, so he he does play root uh, from this spot. So that's that's not that bad an outcome. Um, Thirty nine points, and he he had the X. So he was probably gonna be able to score decently elsewhere. And we've got Shotten, S H O T T E N on our rack. I'm not sure whether it is going to play. Shodden does not take an S, and I don't think Dowing takes an S. I hope not. I'm almost positive it doesn't. I think it's just dousing in that rack. So, let's see. Are there any 9s through this ER? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe, maybe through this KI. I don't, I'm not seeing any nines, unfortunately. We're very close to a bunch of bingos. Whiny doesn't take an S either. Hmm. I'd like to maybe just get rid of, like, THO. Actually, this isn't bad. It's 26, and ENST is such a strong leave. That's probably going to be hard to beat, just uh, from an equity standpoint. I'm pr unless somehow Dowling's is good, in which case I'll really kick myself, but I don't like it. Then I don't think we're missing a bingo. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. Okay, so he does get down Agatizes, but we will be bingoing again to, to stay in this game. We have Orients, Awestrian, Norites, and Stonier as our four sevens. We can bingo with... Uh, oh, it's too bad he blocked the Orneriest on a double-double as another nine. Um, we could nine again with Orienters, but it's probably not best. I don't think we can overlap Pavanes, because Stonier doesn't fit. 
ironiest with an eye, routine, snoutier, snootier. Maybe Orienters isn't so bad, actually. Orienters, Reorients, and Orneriest are the only three nines, I believe. I think it's... It's what, it's two points left, or two points less than playing something like Pointers. Yeah, because that's 72. Orienters is going to be 70. So it wouldn't be crazy just to keep things a little more open, since we'll still be down about 20 plus a tempo, so I don't mind actually keeping it a bit more open to try to facilitate a comeback. Keep some, keep the U on the bottom open as a floater and try to open up the left a little bit. I think it might actually be worth it to to play Orienters, not not just for the flash of playing a second nine in, in the same game, but legitimately for positional purposes at this score. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. Wow. So he plays Z for 13, which is an incredibly aggressive play. I was not expecting that at all. So he's he's got to have a really strong lead, and he's, I would imagine, has the last S if he's playing that. So, uh, wow. Now I have to decide what I want to do about that. I'm also getting a bit low on time. I was looking at flicking but for 38, which looks pretty strong, but it doesn't do anything to address any of the openings that are available, either on the left or the right-hand side of the board. Maybe... I don't think I can really do much under this or over this opening he just created. So I probably have to just hope for the best. I mean, the good news is he can't end a 7 with an S, so we'd have to have an S in the middle. But it's still quite scary. I'm just, I'm down, so I can't really play paranoid defense. Maybe I do just play flicking and try to leave multiple openings. So that way if he hits one, I can hopefully use the other. That might be my best strategy here, since I, I can't really block the stronger one. Maybe I'm just better off leaving both openings open. I don't even see any great plays through this O. Like, I could do s maybe... I don't even know. Like, Yogic. But FLN is terrible. I, I don't love uh, keeping the Y with flicking, so I may also try flying for 34, just because I, I have much better potential to bingo if I do get rid of that Y. And I, I may need to bingo, especially if, if he does hit something, so I kind of think flying is a little bit better than flicking. It still keeps the O open. Yeah, I'm not thrilled with this play. I feel like I'm probably missing something, but I also need to move since I'm down to two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and go for it. Wow, so he does have the S. He plays Anemas, so that's not a bingo, but I've drawn uh, I've drawn some Drek here. I drew two Ds and three Os on a five-tile pool. So I think I'm going to have to play Doodoo. I mean, that looks pretty clear to me. Uh, and now, yeah, this is not looking great, guys, because now I have two Cs and a W. I'm going to need to bingo. I'm down 60. There's three in the bag. Yeah, probably... I can't... I don't think I can play Cow, because I empty the bag, and if I draw something in the bottom, he just blocks. So... Yeah, where else can I even play off CW? If I fish off a W, can I even hit anything? Caloric with an A? But that doesn't even fit. Sheesh. Yeah, I don't know. Can I hit Curculio through the U? No, there's no U left. I'm just trying to think what I can even fish for here. I'm getting very low on time. Yeah, I don't know, guys. 
I mean, maybe I go for like. What if I I can't even play off two C's. If I go for maybe if I do W O and go for like circular or something. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I need to make a move though. Oh, and he just plays private. Okay. Well, this was not our game to win in the end. Um, I'm just gonna play something. Okay, so uh, we have taken our first loss of of the series here. Um, I feel like yeah, at the end I I was staying in the game, but I just got some some rough draws that I couldn't really do much with. I, I felt like Bark Bark was maybe too aggressive. Uh, I didn't feel great overall about this game how I played, but let's uh, let's take a closer look. So from the beginning, he plays Pavan, which looks really strong. Yeah, the computer suggests Kof, which I, I did look at. I just not a fan of JBU. That could get if I draw another heavy consonant, that can get difficult to work with quite quickly. Um, Fob is okay. Again, I'm, I just don't love keeping two huge power tiles together in general. So I, th I think Juba is is perfectly reasonable here. Uh, so yeah, he bingos with a Midogen. Fake looks good. Yeah, Fakey was the other other play I considered here. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything else that's uh, particularly inspiring. So I think I think Fake is okay. Uh, yeah, Dowling looks pretty decent for him. Uh, Judo is kind of cool, but it's uh, it's too big a point sacrifice here. I think uh, opening up a few lanes for for that many points is uh, he's not up that much to to be playing. Paranoid defense, so I think that looks fine. Uh, and then, yeah, Fat Fatuities was a very f fortunate find that I uh, that I was able to see that there's not not a lot of other uh, other good options here. Uh, and then, yeah, Whiny looks Whiny looks good. Um, not much else to really consider here. And let's see, yeah, so uh, so Nib I figured would or something like that would rank st uh, highest on. On static, and and maybe I should have just been a little bit more conservative here rather than going for bark. I um I really didn't want to play this obviously given what it gives back, but it's uh it, it's just by far the best way to get rid of the the Q. I mean Quinn Quinn is fine also, but I mean B E R S it, it's a good leave. It's just not that likely to do anything on this on this board. So I got I got maybe a little too impatient here. Like it's. It's a tie game. Maybe I should just keep it tight and sort of invite him to do something and and open it up. I kind of tried to force the issue here, and I figured if he does score a lot there, I'll have NS and maybe be able to capitalize next turn. But that's probably not actually that likely, especially since any play there is going to take away my my Barks hook for for next turn for potential sevens. So I, I think I probably just got a little bit too um, I guess antsy here or over overconfident in, in my ability to bingo next turn. I, I just don't really think this was uh, this was a necessary risk to take. I probably should just play Quinn or Nib and uh, and lay low for another turn until I get either a, a way to open things a little bit more safely or uh, or to wait for him to open it and then capitalize. Um, if the score was more in his favor than maybe Bark, but I think in, in this close a game, it's it wasn't. It wasn't necessary, so uh, pro probably a bit of a strategic error here. Um, yeah, Rue looks pretty good here. X XU is actually kind of interesting, too, just to really give as little back as possible. Um, there's no blanks left, so there's nothing really to, t to turn over more tiles for. And there's a couple of S's, I suppose. But I XU is actually kind of intriguing, because this is a, a strong bingo leave, and there's, there's an S here, there's an N, there's uh, even the P. There's good floaters to... To play through, and it's it's only a couple points. I guess it's five point sacrifice. So I'm I might have uh, I'm not sure whether I would have played it, but I would have definitely strongly considered XU in this position. Um, okay, good. So Dowings is is no good. I was very slightly worried there um, that that it might be. I'm not sure what I was I was thinking of, but in any case, no bingos here. Though looks quite strong. Uh, yeah, he he gets down agatizes. And then, yeah, there's uh, obviously a, a bunch of 72-point bingos from, from the P, which, I mean, they're reasonable, so they, they bring the score to within 20. I just felt that after this, my ability to bingo the next turn is, is already looking pretty slim, and I felt 
I'm going to be down 20. He's probably going to be scoring maybe 30 or so next turn. I very well could find myself in a position where I'm going to need to bingo again to come back into this game. So I, I decided to sacrifice a couple points and play Orienters just to keep things a little bit more volatile. Uh, if, if the score were closer than it was, I almost certainly would have bingoed from the P, but given I'm still going to have a bit of a deficit with him on turn, I, th I think this is uh, is okay in this position. And uh, yeah, he actually had... Uh, wow, this is an interesting turn for him. He has uh, four E's and ends up uh, ends up going with Z from, from the Z and agatizes to, to set up his S. This is a very aggressive play, but I kind of like it for him since... He can't really do anything about the left-hand side of the board, and given all his one-pointers and, and valves, he definitely, at this score, risks being outrun if he tries to be too paranoid or, or defensive. Um, he has the last S, and with constant heavy pull, 22 consonants to 10 valves, he has a, a pretty good chance at drawing a strong play on the on the right with his Z's hook, and it's, it's really not that easy for me to deal with. I mean, I can play a two-tile play, or something above or below Z, but I don't have any great ways of, uh, of scoring a lot while blocking this spot. And of course, there's no S's left for me to, to possibly be able to use it. So I think uh, it, it is a very aggressive play when you have a lead, but given that there's already an opening, and it's this is one that really only he can use, I think I think this is actually a very smart, smart play here for him. Um, yeah, so flicking, as I suspected, did rank a little bit higher on static. I just really don't like wise in general, especially if I'm thinking I might want to try to bingo again. And given his last play, I, I knew he had a very strong leave and likely the S. So I felt like I was going to... He, he was, I guess, fairly likely to bingo whether or not... whether the next turn or uh, a turn so soon after that. So I wanted to make sure to keep enough potential for myself to bingo back, because if he bingos in this position, I'm 100% going to need to bingo back if I want to have any chance of staying in the game and, and coming back to win. So I think given that sort of predicament I'm in, flicking just doesn't put myself in a good position to, to counter a potential bingo on his part, having having a Y. And uh, CI is a pretty strong leave with this pool. There's a pony at ease, R's, good good tiles to, to help out that leave. So I, th I think flying is, is okay here, given the situation. Uh, and so he, he does cash in with Enemas here, which I think is probably okay, but he could consider just leaving that spot open. Um, yeah, I was looking at a play like Ein. This this actually looks really strong for him, because he has the last S. AEMS is an amazing leave, and uh, flying, I believe, takes an S as well. So he has that, like, if he draws a, an H, he could play Mash for, for like, 50-plus down there. And I don't have a, again, I don't have a great way of dealing with the Z's spot, so I kind of think taking the O out, um, and just keeping that spot for him for, for the next turn looks, looks strong here. On, on the other hand, you could make the argument that, uh, there's actually no E's left in the pool, and it's not that great a pool for Bingoing. There's five O's as well, so may maybe this O isn't that big a threat, and he should actually play Anemas to take out this E, because the E could work really well with my rack and uh, allow me to to bingo through through the E as a floater with some some possible racks in that pool. So there is that argument to be made for Anemas uh, as well. I just feel like he has so much more potential to improve on that side of the board, holding the case S. And there's enough scoring tiles unseen that I he he does potentially still have to worry about me outscoring him without a bingo. So I don't think he um, he necessarily should go all in on what gives me the lowest bingo percentage. I think doing this and keeping all his firepower for next turn while still scoring 22, which is pretty strong, and uh, and taking away some of my opportunities, um, I would lean towards playing Ein here. But I don't think Enemas is a big mistake or a huge strategical error by any means, since it also does have a lot of merit. Uh, but in any case, he plays Anima's. Um, yeah, I pretty quickly played Dudu here. I guess Dodo there is also reasonable. Um, I was getting a bit low on time here, and I, I think I just pretty frantically was like, well, I gotta get rid of all my O's, and I can uh, I can play a word with four O's, so let's, let's do it. Um, 
But yeah, there's there's also several places where I can play doo-doo. I think if I am gonna do so, um, mine is uh, mine is pretty. I don't know why it's not showing up here. Um, but mine mine is pretty clearly best just to uh, give myself the best chance of bingoing next turn, and that's part of why I I think I still like this play over dodo just because I'm I'm gonna be trailing and having a little bit more volatility and, and bingo potential next turn is good for me to hopefully. Um, hopefully be able to bingo, but if not, maybe force him to make some tougher decisions and maybe induce him to sacrifice a lot of points to to block the bingo line just out of fear that I might I might have it. So I think I think Dudu is probably okay there anyway. Um, and then yeah, he plays Homer for a lot, and I don't know here. I mean, I was getting very low on time. I didn't even honestly look at plays like Wilco, but frankly, they they never win. I mean, I'll still be down thirty. I'll be emptying the bag. I'll only have five tiles, and uh, I don't think there's any possible rack he could have with that unseen pool that's uh, that's so awful where I'm going to be able to come back and somehow win the game. Like, e even if I draw three vowels, like, if I draw A-E-I, he, he should still be able to, um, yeah, I mean, he'll just play Voler or something through this through this O. Like, he, he's going to still be able to score enough points or, or Voltai, so I, I don't think I can win without Bingo in here. And I, I looked at Cow during the game, but I mean, I'll be emptying the bag, and there's really only one spot to bingo. So if I play Cow, he just blocks the U. Um, I mean, I don't really see how this ever wins. And yeah, at some point, I just figured maybe if I draw like ER for Circler, and somehow he blocks the bottom. I mean, I, I don't think that's really realistic at all. But it doesn't look like there's much here that realistically gives myself any sort of chance. I mean, if I keep a C and a W, I don't think I can bingo, and I can't play off a C and a W without playing cow and emptying the bag. So I, f I feel like this position is pretty much just dead lost. I mean, I'm just I'm not seeing any any better fishes. If, if anyone sees a way to, to potentially steal this game, then by all means share it in, in the comments, but it, it certainly looks pretty hopeless to me. Uh, and I don't see any choices here on the on the left that are are really any more promising. So, yeah. Uh, of course, he he happens to have private and uh, make this margin a little bit wider than uh, than it would have been otherwise. And at this point, I'm um, getting very low on time. Cole is is of course not not a great play. Uh, home, the cool play of Homeric here is uh, is a couple points better. But at that point, I'm just looking to to not lose on time and uh, sort of just uh, just get this one over with. But um, but yeah, I think uh, I'm I'm more pleased than I was at first before I analyzed the game in terms of how I played. I don't think I made any, certainly no major mistakes. I think Bark was probably my most questionable play of the game, and I, I do think it was a little bit of of a mistake. I'm just not that likely to bingo or or capitalize on that opening next turn, even with an SN leave, and it just gives back way too much to him on a already closed board. I really should have just been a bit more more patient there. So I, th I think that was probably my one mistake of, of the game. But otherwise, um, I think I played pretty well, just uh, had a few rough draws at the end. But, you know, I'm not going to complain. We, we started off 6 nothing. We've been drawing very well, and uh, the bot was definitely due for, for a good game. So I, I don't begrudge him that in the slightest. So, um, so yeah, another another good game overall. That's uh, that's going to be his first win, so it is now 6-1 to one in my favor as we uh, go into game eight. And uh, that's it for this video, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, of course, feel free to post any questions or other ideas I may have missed in the comment section. I'll be happy to look through those, and uh, until next time, I will uh, see you for game eight. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.